Hi Venus, I'm back here with few more stuff related to your community and welcome you all to MDS Conquer online finish line for first MDS students for paper one. Okay, now I'm going to discuss few more important things related to your community in paper one. First and foremost thing is about t-test. I hope you know the basic information related to the t-test which will be directly posted from textbook onto your groups. You can read that t-test also called a student t-test some basic information but make a note Please try to drop this flowchart. The t-test is of two types, paid t-test, unpaid t-test. For sure, you need to drop this table, okay, which gives the basic information and a good idea to the person who is correcting your paper. So paid t-test is on paid t-test, okay, the definition of paid t-test is basically it is, it, is, it is a comparison between the two dependent samples, whereas unpaid t-test it is a samples that are independent. There is a strong relationship between the samples, means before and after a particular uh, period or particular thing. Okay, so whereas unpaid t-test, there is no relationship. I'm just going to give a dental example. So if you're calculating the flow rate, that is, if you're calculating the salivary flow rate of boys and girls, and in other, in other study, you are calculating the salivary flow rate in only one group before and after giving a particular drug. So in the first study, you have calculated the salivary flow rate between two groups, 25 boys and 25 girls, and you have you are comparing that is called as unpaid t-test okay it means the two groups are different boys and girls are different group and the second one you are calculating the flow rate in only one group before and after giving a particular drug means before giving a drug you have calculated after giving a drug you have calculated so this is called as paid there is a relationship between the two groups before and after where there is no relationship between the two groups that is boys and girls so uh, apart from describing or giving some description it is better you code some example clearly so that the paper setter will uh, the paper uh, evaluator will get a better idea over the content what you are writing so this is more than sufficient for paid and unpaid t test okay i'm just going to post few more textbook related stuff onto the groups if you want to make your question question lengthy or if you want to expand you can go ahead the next one is as already mentioned sampling and sampling technique is again a most commonly uh, technique or types is a most commonly asked question so make a note uh, i mean like before you take before you take over uh, the, the definition of sample okay there are some basic things you have to write the definition of sample it is mandatory that you please try to represent because all these the importance of sampling you can you can write them as point point one point two point three point four five and six you can write all these six points and it's going to occupy some space and even if you draw this diagram by creating some circles and everything even that is going to occupy the same space but definitely this type of presentation will get an extra score in your in your final exam for sure so try to improve your presentation skills that's what uh, that is primarily required for uh, uh, the theory papers of the universities so before you st uh, once you're done with the definition of a sample sample and sample size uh, i want you guys to write this total target population or uh, total population source population this is the study population and uh, where we are where your sample will be in this study population so this sort of things which are directly taken from the textbook is going to give some more clarity over your subject right so try to include this also and this flowchart okay is uh, uh, the target population and uh, your 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 when before you're selecting the sample you need to uh, you need to arrange your framework like qualities to be uh, taken into consideration uh, when you want to pick a sample then uh, determine whether it's uh, whether you're planning for a, 
probability sampling or a non probability sampling then plan the sampling unit determine the sample size again sample size is again a, again a question for you i hope you have done your basic things for your thesis right so uh, a determining of sample size is again a uh, again a question that has to be done uh, for the paper one okay selection of sampling units and uh, so try to include this flow chart which is which is again going to be an important thing for this particular question so once you're done with the sampling and everything and all the basics your sampling uh, things can be divided into two types that is probable sampling and non probable sampling just go through the basics of this the difference between the probable and non probable sample sampling techniques once you're done with this the probable samplings are again of uh, i mean many types but basically i want uh, to make a note that there are five types one is simple random sampling one is simple random sampling the second one is stratified random sampling the third one is cluster sampling technique the fourth one is systemic sampling fifth one is multi phase sampling okay so you need to mention all the samplings at least like you need to drop one or two lines related to each sampling technique okay and uh, non probable samplings you have accidental sampling accidental or is also called as uh, incidental sampling the second one is convenience sampling the third one is quota sampling a snowball and other types of samplings are also there you can you can pick them from the textbook but basically the framework is very very important you need to write one or two important points related to each sampling technique and just try to move on because you need to manage the time also basing upon the time uh, how many points you have to write about each sampling you have to decide okay so this is all about sampling the next question is evidence based dentistry uh, my suggestion is apart from this particular question of evidence based dentistry or evidence based medicine um for example if you are taking a 20 marks question not regular 10 marks or 7 marks questions but for 20 marks question and for 75 marks question i want you guys to add one more heading apart from the regular framework what we have learned okay uh, i want you guys to add extra heading that is evidence based dentistry for every question which is carrying 20 20 plus or 75 marks which is a too lengthy question where you need to write n number of pages make sure you drop evidence based dentistry and try to code few evidences uh, and the studies uh, apart from the regular references you drop another heading like evidence based dentistry which is going to give uh, more uh, impression to the person who is correcting the paper so so we'll we'll go deep into the evidence based dentistry first of all i want you guys to uh, write down the definition definitions are important apart from the framework i hope most of us will start the question either by describing the title that is evidence based dentistry it is better to write the definition but i want you guys to Uh, try to try to uh, like catch up the definitions for everything for example there is a question make sure the definition should be perfect and the definition should be coded right references according to this particular gtp according to this particular ada uh, or this particular textbook okay or this particular conference of periodontics conference of prosthodontics the number and everything are important trip so please try to code first of all the definition of evidence based dentistry i'll be sharing onto the group and few things like father of evidence medicine how the evidence medicine has first evidence medicine evidence based medicine has came into existence then the dental people has adapted it when it was adapted some basic history background once you're done with the history background the main important thing is this triad okay this triad of evidence based dentistry is important so please try to include this triad okay with this of circles and everything uh, let let's make a diagram okay so once you're done with the evidence based uh, triad evidence based triangle they can ask the same question evidence based triangle is again important this is evidence based triangle okay you need to draw this triangle with different color codings i mean preferably if your paper is corrected in black and white that is different scenario give some try to give some shades if not try to uh, try to code with some colors okay so So what is this evidence based uh, triangle or evidence based dentistry related triangle codes okay so it's if you start from bottom and if you go to high okay the evidence or uh, the comfortability okay the evidence or the ethical allowance of a particular study increases means the most commonly accepted now the most accepted or most weighted studies are 
systemic reviews and meta analysis right so if you take this this is the background the least one the bottom one the base one is uh, the background information and experts opinion it means the opinion that is given by a teacher or a opinion that is given by a person who is experienced is con considered as the bottom most according to the evidence okay followed by case control studies case series reports and everything are the bottom followed by cohort studies followed by randomized trial control studies followed by critical appraisal articles and everything okay and followed by this the last but no but the, the top topper of the table is systemic reviews and the meta analysis so if you want to elaborate you can elaborate each and everything right one point uh, and just try to quote okay so this is these two important one is triad of evidence based dentistry and the triangle of evidence based dentistry is more important apart from that you need to write some basics i'm going to share a simple article which gives some more information to write more uh, material related to this but make sure these two are very very important and apart from this i have already shared a conclusion uh, a generalized conclusion uh, slide on the group okay so whatever the question is but make sure you try to conclude with the same matter i have given some matter some decent uh, three or four lines so how evidence based dentistry is supportive for you okay so how sampling technique is every for every question how t test is supportive for you but t tests are important in uh, in our uh, techniques or in our studies which helps in determining the exact result something you write some beautiful conclusion slide i have already shared on the group so please try to drop those conclusion slide for everything now the discussion is about evidence based medicine or evidence based dentistry how evidence based dentistry is helping you out same conclusion okay so references are important specifically for evidence based uh, i think these are the best coded and easily you can easily handle handle these references right so this one uh, american dental association easy references you can easily code american dental association center for evidence based dentistry and uh, policy of evidence based dentistry and uh, goldstein gr which is what is uh, evidence based dentistry so please try to quote these four apart from your shoban peter you can you can quote shoban peter also but i feel like uh, these are more uh, preferred uh, references right okay so these are the references for this particular question and these are the common references for all the community based question okay so hope you are doing good uh, i feel like most of your exams uh, were to get updated your dates were not yet announced okay so anyway stay positive we'll try to learn as much as we can and we'll be coming up with few more videos uh, in one or two days signing off dr Srikant from team mds conkal